Right, you're back with another video in Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop. Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. And today, gonna be modifying this switch from your power supply for variable voltage. And yes, anti static mapped. It's second hand, but it's gonna do the job and throw the camera's white balance off. So, two for the price of one. Anyway, before I can do anything with this, I've got to put it back together because I took a few parts out of it for something else, which are now right here. So I've got to put all those back into it, give it a little test, make sure it still works, and then I'll do what you've all been waiting for, and that is modifying this thing for variable voltage. Okay, here we are, a power supply rebuilt and I've connected a 60 watt light bulb in line with the power supply. Now some of you are asking, why have I done that? Why have I connected the 60 watt light bulb in, in line with the power supply? Well, the thing is, if the worst case scenario happens, say, I put a diode in back to front when I was rebuilding it, instead of all that AC mains going into the power supply and possibly blowing something up, most of it will go into the light bulb, and the light bulb will light up, and the power supply stands a much better chance of surviving. And to show the power supply is giving output, I've connected this fan, Wait, because let's face it, that's more interesting than just seeing numbers on a meter. Another thing that I've got to take into consideration, considering that this is a switch mode power supply, is that there are parts in this thing that are gonna have rectified mains voltage on them. So these two transistors here, for one thing, must not touch those. I just want to make sure there's nothing under it that's going to cause any short circuits. So it's all through hole wiring as you can see. Because we don't want any nasty short circuits now, do we? So I'm just going to plug this in. I have no doubt in my mind it's going to work. Because all I've done is just reassembled it and put everything back exactly how it was. So let's just plug that in. And we have power. Now let's modify this thing for variable voltage. So the first thing to find in any switch mode power supply modification be it ATX, be it something like this, got to find the feedback network, provided that it has one, of course. If this was an unregulated supply, it wouldn't have one, but I'm pretty sure this is a regulated supply, so it should have one somewhere. All the feedback network is, is just a voltage divider. There should be one resistor connected to the positive output, and that should go into the chip, and then there should be another resistor connecting that to the ground. And we have one resistor conveniently placed right there, and I'm pretty sure that goes to the positive wire. Taking a look at the underside of the board, I can see that indeed it does, and that's where the resistor is right there. So I'm just going to follow the other side of the resistor along, it goes along the straight run along here, into here. Okay, so it goes into these two, it goes into here and here. So, from the positive wire, it goes into this resistor here, then out of this side, then into here. We've got another resistor and a jumper wire. I'm not sure what each of these is going to, and um, let's see what the jumper wire is going to, which should be this one here, which is this one here, I believe. That is going, looks like it goes down to here. I no, I think that is connected to that diode, which is then going over there. It also goes into this resistor here, which goes into one of the pins on the chip. I can see it goes into this pin on the chip here. And it's also connected to this, whatever's connected here. Okay. Goes in, looks like it goes into this resistor here, and 
Yes, it looks like that resistor connects to a ground. So I think we've found the feedback network. Anyway, just trying to get in closer there so you can see it better. So, we have the positive wire, which goes into here. Which you might be able to hear via the meter beeping. So it goes into that resistor, which is a 1.5k. Then it goes along here into this 10k resistor. Then from this 10k resistor, excuse me a minute, let me get my just let me get my wires round. Then from this 10k resistor into pin one on the chip here. Then from pin one on the chip to this resistor, and then the end of that resistor is connected to ground. So, if we were to change any of these resistors, it would change the output voltage. Well, should do anyway, so let's try that and see what happens. And we're back. I've taken out the resistor here, which I thought was a 10k resistor, but it's actually 20k. And I've replaced it with a 20k variable resistor. So now, we'll be able to see how well this modification actually does work. Got the fan connected up and the meter. Also got the trusty light bulb connected in series with mains. So if the worst should happen, say something in this locks up and shorts out, it's gonna go through the bulb and, well, you know the rest. Anyway, I'm happy to tell you, the variable voltage modification does work. So I adjust this potentiometer. I can get any voltage I want. Right up to 12.1 volts, well, almost 12.2 volts. Down to about five volts. So there we go. That is how you modify a switch mode power supply for variable voltage. Okay, so now I'm going to try to explain, and probably fail at it, and how my modification works. But first I think I ought to just show how a switch mode power supply sort of regulates the power. So I've drawn a schematic of the output stage, as you can see right here. This is the output transformer, which is this odd shaped thing right here. Now, unlike a mains transformer, which gets a nice AC waveform at 50 or 60 Hertz. The transformer in this, and other switching power supplies, gets this waveform. As you can see, we got flat bit, then a pulse there, then another flat bit, then a pulse in the opposite direction, and then another flat bit, and then it just repeats over and over again. And it's the width of those pulses that determines the output. So, you've got thin pulses, that's a little bit of output got wider pulses that's much more output and these transformers operate at a much higher frequency than your standard 50 hertz or 60 hertz we're talking more tens of kilohertz say 20 kilohertz 30 kilohertz maybe even more now i haven't actually drawn in the circuitry that drives the transformer for a convenient purpose because that's just going to take forever going through the circuit and trying to you know, see where everything's connected. So, you know, just use your imagination for what's connected there. Just remember that that's the kind of thing the transformer's going to get. Anyway, the more observant of you might be able to see that this is very much, this output stage is very much like a linear power supply. We've got a rectifier here, which is this thing on this heat sink. It looks like a big ass transistor, but it's not. It's actually a rectifier. We've got two beefy diodes in the same package, usually fast diodes like shocky diodes or something like that. Next we have an inductor, which is this donut shaped thing with lots of wire wrapped around it. And of course the output filter capacitor, which is this cylindrical thing. So we have AC coming out of the transformer, and as you can see it's a centre tapped output. We've got two identical secondaries which are connected in series, so we have a centre tapped output. Then the rectifier. And then to smooth the output, an inductor and a capacitor. And they turn those pulses 
into a smooth DC output, which we get right here. So, what do these resistors do then? Well, that's the feedback network that I mentioned earlier. I've got two resistors here, so we have about 21.5k. Then we've got a 5.1k resistor here, and that's the feedback network, which as you can probably tell, is nothing more than a simple voltage divider. Then that goes into the chip, which provides the pulses, and the width of those pulses that the chip makes is determined by the voltage that it gets from the feedback network. Then they get amplified by these transistors here and sent into the transformer. And we get a nice smooth regulated output right here. Now all I did to get variable voltage from this thing was change this resistor from a fixed resistor into a variable resistor. And there we go, that allows me to get variable voltage from a fixed voltage power supply. Okay, so I found the data sheet for the chip, so I'm now going to connect the chip's output to my scope. And as I change the voltage and change the load, we're going to be able to see how the chip's output changes to work the transformer and provide the power it needs. Okay, so I've got the power supply on. Now, sorry about all the background noise, but I have to have my fan on really high because it's absolutely... Everything in this room is melting, it's so hot, but... Anyway, I've got both of the chip's outputs connected to the scope. And you can see we have a pulse here, a pulse here, a pulse here, and there's another pulse out off the screen. Let's see if I can just get that on there. Yeah, there we go. To try to do this, uh, to try to keep this as simple as possible, I'm going to use a kind of comparison here. Let's say each of these pulses here is a push on a swing. Now, I'm sure most of you know that if you give someone a little push on a swing, they'll swing a little way, and if you give them a big push on a swing, they'll swing much further. And a narrow pulse is like a small push on a swing, and a wider pulse is like a much bigger push on a swing. Anyway, I've turned the voltage up to 12 volts. As you can see here, well, it's a little bit over 12 volts, but isn't it? it's close enough. And you can see how wide the pulses are there. So. This is like giving a bigger push on the swing. And now I'm going to turn the voltage down. And you can see, as the voltage goes down, those pulses get thinner and thinner. Until eventually, they become too small to be even seen by the scope. And as I increase the output, giving more and more push on swing, so the person's swinging more and more. Or in other words, the voltage is rising and the fan's going faster. So you can see with wider pulses we get more power. Now, as you also probably know, pushing a bigger person on a swing, you have to give a bigger push. So if I stall this fan, it's going to pull more power from the power supply. I can't do this for too long because if I stall the fan for too long the fan's just going to give up entirely and stop but try not to obscure the meter here as I stall out the fan you can see those pulses get wide yet the voltage barely changes see it's giving much more of a push to maintain that 12 volts and if I, if I stall out the fan for too long, yeah, it gives up. So the fan's not taking any more power, so it might just as well be out of the circuit at this point. In fact, let's just disconnect it anyway. As you can see, the voltage is still 12 volts, but the pulse width that's needed to keep the voltage at 12 volts with no load is so thin, it can't even be seen on the scope. Okay, so you saw how thin those pulses have to be for 12 volts with no load. This does actually present a problem. It makes it practically impossible to regulate the output of this power supply under about 10.5 volts or so. It just becomes impossible. Now, I've got this onto the lowest setting it can be. And as you can see, with no load, we've got about 9.3 volts. Now, I'll connect up the fan. And the fan can't even start. But you can see it's brought the voltage down to 6.4 volts. 
is jittering about a bit there, but um, now there is a load connected, I can actually get regulated output. So I'll just get the fan to start. And I'm going to put it to about 8 volts. OK, so 8.7 volts, that's near enough. Now when I stall the fan, remember that will pull more current from the power supply. As you can see, it does a good job of maintaining the voltage. And I'm just going to disconnect the fan now. Without the load, voltage goes up. But with load connected, excuse my arm, voltage goes down, but down to what we want. And increasing the load, it's still, be, it's still able to maintain that voltage. Now about here is about the lowest voltage I can get it where it's regulated properly. See, we've got 10.6 volts there. We connect up the fan. Voltage doesn't budge. Of course, not all switch mode power supplies are going to have this problem. Some of them, you might be able to perfectly get away with it. It just really depends on how it was designed. So we've seen that we can modify a switch mode power supply for lower voltage. But I know some of you are asking, can I modify it for higher voltage? And the answer is, yes you can. OK, I've added another resistor in line with this resistor. You know, it's kind of like what's going on back here. And right now, with this one set to its lowest resistance, we've got 11.7 volts. Perfectly regulated. But now, when I turn this up, we can go way higher. Look at that, 18 volts. We get 18 volts out of that. And I'm sure with less resistance that will go even higher, but I don't want to try to get too much out of this just in case I blow something. And yes, these higher voltages will also be properly regulated. Let's just put this on to 15 volts. So, increasing the voltage. So, we've got 15 volts out now. I'll connect up the fan. And there we go. Anyway, that's about it for this tutorial because I'm sure this video is getting way too long already. So anyway, that's how you modify a switch mode power supply for different voltages. Of course, you might get different results with different power supplies, you know. It's just, you know, some of it depends on how the power supply is built and how the transformers are made and, you know, there's all kinds of different things. So anyway, that's how you do it and a little bit of theory on how switch mode power supplies work. So anyway, I've just got to go and edit this video now, so until next time, goodbye.